invite our next speaker for the day that is Ms. Rajita Singh who is head of HR at Broadridge. Giving a brief introduction, Rajita in many ways represents the changing face of India's IT-ITS industry where human resource professionals are increasingly becoming strategic partners to the core functions. A management graduate by education, Rajita has been in the IT industry since 2000 and uh, currently heading the human resources at Broadridge Financial Solutions, India Private Limited. She started her career as a recruiter, rose to the top and led the recruitment of ADP India Private Limited, Hyderabad and moving ahead as head of HR at Broadridge. She has spearheaded many progressive and diversified roles across the HR function. And for this, welcome Ms. Rijita with you. Uh, I think it was a very energetic conversation, a very jazzy presentation to a lot of uh, animation. And in a way, I'm very happy that I'm after you because I'm discussing things on industrial relations and on the psycho or the emotional aspect of it. So first I thought that, you know, we'll put a deck together with just a plain black and white with tons of, you know, matter to read, which year, who said what and things like that. Then I said, no, 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 let's just get a little creative. No animations, straight talk. And I assure you that I will bring you back on time by 4.20. So within eight minutes, I'll try to cover as much as I can. Um, essentially, what I'm trying to do is that this presentation is going to talk of fundamentals. You know, as HR professionals, we have a lot to do at our end. And uh, there's a lot of new jazz that's coming into the system. But till the time your fundamentals are not clear, it's very tough to understand what are you trying to accomplish. So I'm going to refer to the Icarus deception era. That's where we are today. It is, uh, I don't know how old this is, but it's a pretty old one. And there are three takeaways that come out of this deception. One is we need to move out of our comfort zone. We need to understand what is comfortable to each of us respectively. And how do you come out of it? Like for example, you know, earlier I think, uh, you know, Vikas referred to um, come up with HR policies for the people, by the people and, you know, etc. And not by HR. I think HR are also people. And HR do what people want to do. So you need to understand what's the comfort zone of every individual that you have in the system. Second is in the new economy. We've transitioned through economies over the last, I don't know how many decades. So you're in a conceptual age. I don't even want to call it the knowledge age. So in a conceptual age, what are the different type of opportunities you have? What do you want to leverage? Don't go with the fad, that this is a fad and I want to do it and this is how it's going to be and things, so on and so forth. I'm saying that out of experience because I've burnt my fingers many times. And lastly, is it would, you need to view yourself as an artist. Shoot me in the head on that, okay? I'm talking IR and I'm saying you want to be an artist. You need to be an artist because you need to paint on your canvas the way you want it and what actually gels with your associate population or employee population. Over here, how many of you have had this feeling of perception, standing in the shadow and saying, holy crap, I'm Batman. I have that feeling every day. <laughs> the reason it's important to have this feeling is that till the time you don't understand how you're perceiving your associates, and how you are being perceived by them is what's going to make all the difference. So it's important to understand the fundamental of this to reach to an emotional or a psychological state of anyone is to figure out perceptions. Unfortunately, perceptions have become the new reality. There's, there was one statement when we were growing up that if you repeat a lie a thousand times, people who don't know you will end up believing that is the truth. So, Essentially, HR needs to work on that aspect of the perception. Coming back to IR, essentially, there are, from a dominant aspect, there are two of them. Okay? One is cooperation, the other is conflict. What does cooperation try to do? Cooperation is, is very, you know, from a functional aspect, what is important to do, why do you need to do it, and it, it is both labor and capital intensive. When I say capital intensive, it's the investment you do, the payouts you do for associates. Until a few months back, attrition was like a biggest issue. You know, attraction was like a biggest issue. There are different, you know, ways of viewing it now. People are like, yeah, it's coming down. It's kind of stabilized. Recession's hitting. Things are going to happen. But the fact of the matter is industry continues to grow the way it is. So how is it that you are going to come up with a cooperation model for your respective audience and how you want to take it forward. The second aspect is conflict. 
nobody even talks about conflict. It comes only when shit hits the roof, right? I'll give a very simple example, payroll. People are used to payroll processing, 100% accurate, everything's going fine month on month. The day payroll doesn't hit people's accounts on the last working day, and it's T plus one, that's when it's a big issue. That's when conflict arises. So essentially you need to figure out, conflict could be on two aspects, right? One would be an individual physical health aspect, the other would be workplace peace. So what I mean by that is many a time, I, I don't know about you guys, um, you know, but I come from Hyderabad. So there are a lot of case studies that have happened in Hyderabad, especially post-pandemic. Earlier I used to refer during the pandemic, I want to say post-pandemic, where a lot of challenges that have come out are more about people not being okay and comfortable in their own skin. People complaining that I'm not able to take the stress. And that's when conflict has arised, when rollouts of major organization interventions have had to happen and plugs have to be pulled at the last minute. Say for example, Go Live, I won't take the example of the organization, was for one organization was 1st October. On 30th September at 4 p.m., it was the plug was pulled off, saying that this is going to boomerang and we're not going to do it. The second is about personalities and prejudice. Every person is different. Every individual is different and every organization, the way it functions is different because when you talk of IR or you talk of groups of people, it's the mentality which is collective together that gives you that perspective. So it's important to understand and appreciate that. In 1955, there was a study that was published which essentially said that human emotions have every right to be called as scientific. Of course, it's a no-brainer. And for that, they said that the qualifications were on principles, prediction, and uh, you know where the, the pedagogy or the pedigree was strong. The second aspect was on human behavior, where they spoke of group behaviors and how everybody needs to come back together and do it. Here, why discuss emotions in IR? I completed a new IR training uh, as part of my PhD maybe about two years back and I hated those classes. Prof used to tell me, try to focus on IR, it's important, it's important. Um, there are certain union come kind of organizations that have also been formed in IT and ITES, right? And then those people want to represent the others on behalf of them and take it forward from there. So why are we wanting to study emotions over here? Is because it, emotions have started to become very serious business at corporates. The way people react and respond to you is because of the way they feel. How, how are they mentally aligned with themselves and how are they mentally aligned and belong to you as an organization. Great Places to Work rolled out a mental wellness study. This is the third year running and they are, all, they are uh, publishing companies which are doing extremely well on that. The second is before emotions were attributed to, you know, a taken for granted status, but now it's more pronounced with regards to it's, and it's not implicit, but it's explicit. And then lastly, it's about realism. It has to be about which emotion influences what. I'll give you a very simple example. I'll talk of Broadridge. We as an organization during the pandemic became a lot of, uh, very heavily dependent on asynchronous communication. You know, that I will send out a note using Teams, whatever, whatever, and let people log into Yammer channels, whatever, understand, and you know, I'm done with my job. Great places to work, scores are great. But the fact of the matter is, emotionally, people were not feeling very connected. And I need to, I needed to understand that aspect of it. And then the second, when I talk of realism again, is while I'm okay with it, I do need to appreciate the fact that people want face-to-face -face connect and so on and so forth. So we started doing things like ask me anything. Ask me anything is not work related. You will come and talk to leaders to understand the human side of them, to understand how they feel. So it's all about expressing emotions. It's not about vulnerability, but it's about getting to know somebody at a different level. So with this, what do emotions tell us? Emotions essentially are complex to understand. And also at times, they're both social and political. So you could think that what's the risk and gain of it? Or am I really doing the teamwork when I want to do? I purposely put Tom and Jerry because many times people call HR Tom and Jerry's the associate. So in a scenario like this, 
how do you go about understanding who's trying to do what? I'm just going to leave you with one thought, is that you never step into the same river twice. So the kind of experience you're going to give somebody from an emotional standpoint or the emotion he or she's going to hold is purely dependent on you. So please do figure out what works well for you as HR, for you as business, and what's going to work well for your associates. Thank you.